Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Carla. If you're new here and I make videos about how I show up for myself in hopes of inspiring you to do the same. In today's video, I have a guest with me. This is Jared, or also known as The Weight Whisperer, and he is the founder and brains behind Body Slims, which is the program that I did that helped me to lose 180 pounds. Jared, do you wanna say hello? Hello, how are you? Brains, I'm not, not so sure I can contribute so much to the, the conversation. I didn't realize I was being brought in to talk about me brain, but anyway, I'll do my best. He is indeed. <laughs> I know it's January and a lot of people are starting off on a weight loss journey. And as somebody who's lost 180 pounds and somebody who runs a weight loss program, or probably one of the only actual weight loss programs that's coming up. We wanted to talk maybe about a couple of things that I wish I knew before I started to lose weight or things that I, you know, even before I wanted to go on a weight loss journey, things that would have really helped me to understand and to know. Without further ado, we're going to hop into them. So the very first thing that I wish I knew before losing weight or embarking on any kind of weight loss journey is that there is a big difference between weight loss and weight maintenance. What we have been sold as weight loss from many other programs, many, you know, basically every well-known weight loss industry program, that weight loss is actually make maintenance. I, I, I find this, it's a fascinating area, but I found it amazing within the weight loss industry because, um, you know, there wasn't and isn't a huge amount of wonderful research done into weight maintenance, but there is one, which is, in my opinion, the gospel. Uh, it's a, the National Weight Loss Registry in the States. It's in Brown, uh, Brown Medical School in Providence, Rhode Island. And it was a survey, and the first thing was, it was over 10,000 people. They had to have lost, uh, I think it was at least two stone, and they had to have maintained it for five and a half years. And one of the key components, there was a lot of components, because the wonderful thing they did was they studied the behavior of the people who had successfully maintained this weight loss for five and a half years. One of the biggest things that they found was that over 90% of these people exercise daily. This is for weight maintenance, not weight loss, remember. Exercise daily, and the preferred choice was walking. So... Now, there was a number of other findings in that from the amount of time people watch TV to the diet they maintain. It's still low calorie and low in bad fats. But after, when I was looking at this and trying to put Body Slims together, the first thing I realized is, you know, the weight loss had been less of an issue. People had been losing weight, but trying to maintain weight loss had be, been a real challenge for people. And part of the reason for that, I think, is that a lot of people do things like, uh, say you do something like juicing. After you've done your juicing, what do you do? You go back to normal food. You're back to exactly the same problem as you were, albeit maybe at a lower weight. The same with meat only, with any of these sins, all this sort of stuff. When you get back to the real world, you haven't actually learned a new skill. So when I was designing Body Slims, I took the model for successful weight maintenance and reverse engineered it to be able to allow it to be used to lose weight and the whole idea, it's not a guarantee, but on week 10, as you know, I spend a lot of time talking about weight maintenance and saying, you won't maintain your weight or not, men your, sorry, your weight will not maintain or not maintain itself, your weight loss. You do it. We have to understand this concept that we do it. But the wonderful thing about Body Slims is the transition from what they were doing to losing the weight, to being able to have the life you want. And I always say, you can have it all. You can go to the party, you can do it all. As you know now, at the dress size, at the shape, whatever it is you want to be, the price you pay is you can't have it now. But people, if they will understand this, maintenance is your responsibility. It will, it, it will not independently happen for you. If you go right back to doing what you did before, you'll get the same results. But weight maintenance is, while it's challenging, it is also the best of all worlds because, you know, while you're trying to lose the weight, it should be seven days a week. But once you get to weight maintenance, you know, we, one of the plans, the five week on to five day on, not five week on, five, five, five <laughs> day on, two day off. You know, it allows people to accommodate it into their life. And but it, it's something that needs to be highlighted and talked about this 
this confusion constantly between weight maintenance and weight loss. And yeah, and, and I, I, I do say this, you know, that when somebody comes in and they kind of have a bad week and, and all the rest, it, it, of course it's great that they're still back. I do some, some very simple figures, as you know, on the course. You know, if somebody comes in and they do it my way, they lose, you know, two and a half pounds, two and a half pounds, two and a half pounds, two and a half pounds over four weeks. It's 10 pounds. Mm. Now, if that same person uses that sort of older model that was used in conventional weight loss groups, two and a half down the first week, brilliant. Then two and a half down the second week, they're still running with it. Two and a half down, or sorry, maybe the third week, something happens. They go two and a half up. Now our running total was two and a half, two and a half. So we were at five after two weeks. And this is something people find hard to grasp. When you put that two and a half back on, not only have you not lost two and a half, but you've actually gained two and a half. So our running total is now two and a half. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. So uh, after, and then we say you get religious the next week. I did everything right. Two and a half. Your grand total at the end of four weeks is five. If if you're doing it more than that, you know. So somebody who's good one week, bad the second week, good the third, and that is basically where they're doing a maintenance program. Yeah. You're not actually doing a weight loss program, and that's the confusion. You'll be doing it forever, and you cannot. I mean, I I can't say you won't. I, I'm saying you cannot get to where you want to go doing yeah. that. And that's that's something that, that to me, I think when when I first learned that in body sims at the first week, that was unreal to understand that for me. It it changed my perspective to understand that weight loss weight loss is a a strategic intervention for a finite amount of time. We cannot control the amount of time, you know, you can only do what you can do to get to it. But it's an amount of time where you do an activity, an action, an intervention, like body sims or whatever it is that you're doing to get to that result. You're not half-assing it, you know, you're not kind of, you know, one week you're you're doing it religiously, the next week you're doing it not, you're not having your cheat days and the only person you're cheating on is yourself. So going at it full hog for a specific amount of time means that you get the results. So as opposed to that person who was you know, took one week off and ended up, you know, only losing five pounds in four weeks. Somebody who does it as a strategic keeps going, loses 10 pounds. Yeah. You double, know, so they're double, double, double. That's double. So Or half the time to get where you exactly. want to go. So instead of, you know, kind of cheating on yourself, doing it and going full hog at it is re like that. That was such a lesson to me. And that actually brings me on to the, the next uh, lesson that I or the next thing I wish I knew. We're always looking for this bright light in the sky motivation, this thing that is, you know, this inspiration that's going to come out of nowhere and it's going to make us lose weight. It's going to be the thing that's going to help us to do it. But the problem with motivation is it's not a consistent state. It's not a thing that's going to last forever. And in that, we need to make sure that we can do those things on the daily basis. And Jared will always say this in Body Slims, is to do it, you know, like take the action on a daily basis. And that's where consistency is actually the key. So instead of looking for motivation, the true essence of getting anything that you want in the world, whether it's in your career, whether it's weight loss, whether it's building muscle, whatever it is, it's consistency. And you must have found that 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 like how absolutely i mean consistency is key as as you say i mean there's there's so many enthusiastic beginners and these are all habit patterns that that people will have and you're right motivation is a wonderful thing um but it doesn't last it's like gratitude you know and we all know this we all have so much to be grateful for and when we bring it into our minds we see it very clearly and we become convinced to the point that where we laugh and go i'll never complain again and an hour later, without meaning to do it, you find yourself back in the state. And it, it is just one of them things. It, motivation is a great starting point. You know, there's two, one of two reasons people will change. Inspiration or desperation. And usually, you know, if, if, if we're talking, say, in our case, where it's the weight loss industry um, or, or people looking to lose weight, I always believe they have enough desperation of their own. That's why they came in the first place. So I, I don't try and add to that and you try to add inspiration but in terms of what they can do it's all about consistency consistently showing up for yourself 
consistently doing what you've got to do on a daily basis. Because the, the truth is everybody will be challenged. Everybody, nothing will go perfect for anybody who, who's looking to do anything. There's going to be challenge days. It could be the weather. It's how you're feeling. You're feeling tired. Can you show up for yourself consistently? Do it consistently. It's one of the reasons that I only use walking because walking is is the least likely, nothing is a guarantee, but it's the least likely to cause an injury. And on the basis of that, people are able to be consistent and consistency will always win out. But yeah, it's about, I, another thing that I say, and it, it's about doing it. Like the reality is this is about Which doing is it. Reality. Liking it is optional. Yeah. And that's what was told to me back in my early days in AA. I remember saying this to somebody, uh, and in case anybody doesn't know, alcohol was my issue. Um, and I was 23 when I stopped drinking, so as you can see, it's quite a while ago now. But uh, I remember saying to somebody, I, I don't like, there was one of the, it was one of the things, one of the steps, and uh, I would go, I don't like that at all, I don't like the sound of it, I don't like the idea of doing that. And what they just said is, liking it's option. Doing it's not. If you want to recover, you're doing it, so we're telling you, being honest, you know, doing it is not a, is not optional. Liking it's certainly optional. If you want to choose to like it, great. But consistency is, is what it's all about. And, you know, so many people have these behavioral patterns, the enthusiastic beginner, you know, I do a great week or I do even a great two weeks. Or, but it's actually just about doing great days and let the days start to stack. And all of a sudden, the result you want is just waiting for you. And really, we never have to live more than one day at a time. If we can get that day right, that one day, what day, two day, the result you want is, is just there for you, but absolutely consistency. I often say commitment is, 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 is a key. The two Cs, you need commitment. Commitment will start you. Commitment, motivation, inspiration, whatever terminology. But consistency will bring you home. It's yeah. all about showing up day after day after day. Yep. Yeah. And it's not sexy either. No. It's not. No. It's not fun. It's but, not but always But do fun. it and you end up feeling... That's the weird thing about that. I couldn't agree more. When you say to somebody, you know, do this or this stuff, and people go, that's not a sexy workout. Yeah. I prefer... And you go, yeah, I know, but do it. Yeah. And that's how you <laughs> feel at the end. It's yeah. kind of bizarre. Not every meal needs to be delicious. This is something I wish I had understood a long time ago. And... I think that this is a really interesting perspective here because on this side you have a foodie raised in a family that were restaurateurs, that had a bakery. Food was the essence, an Italian family. Everything, every celebration, everything revolved around food. On the other side of the table here, we have somebody who doesn't really care about food whatsoever. Well, yeah, no, I don't want to now sound like a Labrador, you know, just I eat, eat, but I'm not, it, it, food would never be my thing. I wouldn't buzz off food. So I have, like, my own sort of thing was a lot of the time when I was back playing sport, I ate for a purpose. So it wasn't for, you know, now, again, let, let me please point out my own failing, at least anybody think I'm being judgmental, was alcohol. So I, I can understand all the drives, the compulsion. The first thing you're going to say to anybody is you've got to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. With food, you cannot say you need to stop eating. Although people will try to say that uh, to you. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a crazy kind of yeah. thing. Because of course you've got to eat. One of the things that's happened is people have started to associate pleasure with food. You know, and, and there's a lot of people think there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you're paying a price for it, if you're overweight, if you're out of shape, if you're unhealthy, if you're not feeling good in yourself, there's an enormous price that you're paying for that. Now, the thing you, you've got to understand with food is if you're seeing food and that's your pleasure center, that's where you're getting all your reward and the, the point I often make is if you, if you don't leave yourself any other areas in life to find your challenges and to find your enjoyment and to find your dopamine fix, we will automatically default to something negative, food or drugs or, 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 or something. What I always suggest to people is they disassociate from the pleasure of food and they start to understand the concept of food as fuel. 
which is essentially what it really is, um, that you're actually just taking in what you need because your purpose is not to produce the most succulent meal that you've ever had, but rather you're looking to lose the weight. So what is the most efficient thing to eat to try to make that happen? And then to try to change this behavioral pattern over the 10 weeks so people are better able to find their dopamine fix from other things, mm -hmm. from other areas of their life, to allow them to live a fuller, healthier life where they can still, because again, you know, I always say this, you can have it all. You can go for your nicest meal in your favorite place. Your, you, you can do all that at the size and shape you want to be, but the price you will pay for getting there is not having it now. As somebody who, who did get all of her dopamine from food, that was as a food, a former food addict, a recovered food addict, I got my pleasure, I escaped my body, I escaped my feelings with food and it had to have a certain taste and if it didn't taste I would want more of something else and you know the taste started to wane after a while as with alcoholism, you know the first drink does it for a while and then you need two and then you need three. For me one of the ways, like cutting it out until, what was it, cut it if you can't if you can't cut it, if you can't cut it down, cut it out. It's a very, very good yeah. way of actually having a look at yourself and seeing whether anything in your life is actually having a sort of detrimental or having more control in your life than it should have. And that is, you know, if you find anything very difficult to cut down, then, and this goes to even mobile devices and things like this at, at this stage, you know, this sort of level, and it's, it's kind of a precursor for addiction, that if you can't comfortably cut something down, then you may have an issue. For trigger foods, for me, I had to cut them out. So my trigger foods were, uh, the one of the main ones was tortilla chips. For me, if, yeah. I, if I open a bag of tortilla chips, I would eat the whole bag of tortilla chips and probably go back. And like, I'm not talking like a bag, I mean like a bag. And what I did was cut it out. And then much further into my journey, you know, maybe almost a year in, I started to reintroduce anything that I saw as a trick or food in smaller portions. So in a portioned bag, uh, like a, a, a single serving size yeah. and see how I coped with having the single serving size. And because the amount of time that had, you know, the amount of work I had done between the start and at that point, the tortilla chips didn't have that much of an effect on me anymore. You know, like, and I found that that way. And now I can, you could have a bag of tortilla chips here and it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even yeah. register with me. So that was one of the, the ways that I did it. But also in terms of every meal not needing to taste delicious, I found that meal planning helped me with this. So seeing food as fuel. So deciding as a intermittent faster, I didn't eat breakfast, but I decided my lunch and dinner for every meal for the week. And what that did was helped me then to not have an emotional attachment to the food. I did my meal plan, we went shopping, that was all that was in the fridge and in the pantry. And then when it came to, you know, Tuesday night and I had a really bad day in work and everything was very stressful, I knew, I looked at the menu and this is what I had. And if I had been you know, prior to this, if I hadn't decided that I this is what I was going to eat on Tuesday night, I would have been like, oh, I'll have something really tasty, I'll have something nice. And it's helped me to stop to use food as my coping mechanism, as a, as a way to change my state. And instead, like, this is what you have decided you're having for dinner, and this is what you're going to have. And not allowing yourself, like, almost kind of like, you know, you always give the, the thing of the prison. If you're in prison and you're given the meal, you'll survive. And that's the way I kind of thought about it, is this is my meal and I don't get to choose something else. And doing that helped me to understand, like sometimes it was tasty, sometimes it wasn't. And it doesn't have to be like, one of the things I get asked all the time is, can you give me recipes for this and recipes for that? And I'm trying to dissuade people from that kind of behavior, you know, dissuade people from trying to find the tastiest thing at the lowest calories, instead trying to just see what's gonna feed me the best at this calorie as yeah. opposed to so sometimes it's really simple for me it's some kind of vegan protein some kind of carbohydrate and a load of veg and you know it might not be the most interesting thing but that's okay and i Can think I... that that's that's a part of like showing up for yourself is sometimes parenting yourself uh, and saying like instead of being oh, no, we'll go have something nice being yeah, like yeah. that's what you're getting yeah you know but it's this thing as well you know and this is the one i'm always trying to get through to people because 
obviously I know a wee bit about addiction, whereby you get people and they go, I'm hungry. I like something. Yeah. You go, okay, you're hungry, I'll get you a carrot. They go, I don't want a carrot. And, then and you go, but hungry. I thought you said you were hungry. I am hungry. You go, you're not hungry. If you were hungry, you'd savage the carrot. The reality is people are not looking for food. They're generally looking for sugar. They're looking for a treat. They're looking for a release. I want, some, what, you know, the, the term, I want, some, I want something nice. I mean, now, the moment you say that, I want something nice, in this situation, what you're saying is, I want a drug, I want a chemical release in my body to change my state. And if you're using food to change your feelings, that is the same as somebody using alcohol to change their feelings, using drugs to change their feelings. There's really and truly no difference between them. And it's trying to break that cycle and get people to understand the differential between food as fuel and because I think using food as fuel you can still have pleasure you can make that brilliant salad you can do that so you can get both but if you're using food purely as a pleasure then it's a drug then you're you're doing it to create a release and uh, and you can never sate it there is no point at which you go even I've said it before the fall down drunk where you go, well, he's had enough, he's passed out. It's very hard to pass out from boxes of chocolates. And you can try. Well, I, 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 I'll, <laughs> I've I'll, I'll bow to Carla's experience on that one. But you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's not that point, that, that sort of It's form. never, you never, there's never enough. There's never, no, enough it doesn't exist. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, we are actually going to be filming a part two, which is going to be on the Body Slims YouTube channel. So if it's out by now, I'll have it linked down below. But thank you so much, Jared, for being part the, of the... Thank the, you, um, Carla, for, for having me. And uh, yeah. What did she say at the start? She was going to pick my brain with slim pickings. It was slim. <laughs> it, but there's people there going, I don't know why you're asking that for anything. But if you've made it to the end of the video, please leave uh, three purple hearts for Body Sims for the purple of Body Sims down in the description box down below. And please do not forget to show up for yourselves. And I will chat to you very soon. Bye, guys. Bye.